right, hi guys, it's Candy and welcome back to Candyland. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my January book reviews. If you guys don't know, I have a book club. It's called the Candyland Book Club. I just started it in 2018 and basically every month I have three books that I'm going to read and then the following month I'm going to give you my review on them and I'm going to kind of include some spoilers. I don't want to spoil the book all the way to like the very end but I will probably include some spoilers with most of the books that I talk about. So the books for January, the first one I wanna talk about is The Kind Worth Killing, and I'll put the book up on the screen right here. I'm actually in a hotel room right now. We're away at a dance competition this weekend with my daughter, and I didn't wanna to have to like bring all the books with me. I've already read them, but I just wanted to be able to get this done because I can't believe it's already February. I'm almost done with the first book for February and I will put the links down in the description for all three books for February if you guys would like to join in for this month. So first book, The Kind Worth Killing and uh, I would say this book, I always rate a book on like almost like how fast I read it. If I devour a book in a couple of days like I did the last book for January then you know it's really really good. If the book sits there for a while I like to take baths a lot in the winter and if I take the book to the bathtub with me and I end up sitting on my phone the whole time instead of reading the book, then I kind of know, all right, the book probably wasn't that great. So the thing with The Kind Worth Killing, it started out so good from the very, very beginning. Basically, and I'll let you guys know now, I'm really terrible with remembering people's names, whether I'm reading a book or watching a show on TV. Like I love the show This Is Us, but I couldn't tell you the name of half the people on the show. I know Randall, he's my favorite, but I am terrible at names. So I'll try to remember. I wrote down a couple notes, but I didn't get very far because I've been running out of time. But um, for this first book, so there's Ted and he meets this girl, Lily, and he's going on a flight from London to Boston. They end up sitting next to each other on the plane and they kind of play this little game of like you have to tell the truth no matter what and he ends up telling her how he wants to kill his wife. He recently had found out that she was cheating on him and there's this girl Lily, she is attractive and young and she's like just out of nowhere, like end of first chapter I think if I remember right, she's like I want to help you, I think you should kill her kind of thing. So you're like what? So throughout the book and throughout the chapters kind of goes, um, you kind of learn more about how Ted found out his wife was cheating on him and you know he's this rich business guy and he's building this mansion of a house and it's actually the um, owner of the construction company, his name is Brad. Um, he's the one that his wife is having this affair with. And then it goes like you kind of get to know more about Lily and wow why her mind is so messed up like she had a boyfriend in college that cheated on her and just all this crazy stuff like this is put it this way this isn't the first time she's about to kill someone so you learn like so much about her history and you're just like how does this girl get away with this stuff she ended up killing her ex-boyfriend from college and well, it was her boyfriend, I guess, at the time, but she pretty much just kind of kept dating him so she could kill him. Um, just all this crazy stuff you learn about everyone. Well, about halfway through the book, like, and here's a spoiler, so definitely skip this if you don't want to hear this part. Halfway through the book, Ted dies. And guess who kills him? Brad, the construction worker. So all along, Miranda's her name, the wife. All along, the wife purposely had an affair with Brad so she could con him into killing her husband and making him believe, well, I'm gonna buy you this fancy boat and we're gonna travel together and we're gonna live in this mansion together, but I need you to kill my husband. So he ends up doing it and you're just like, I thought Ted would be like the main character through the whole entire book. So you're just like, he can't be dead. Well, he's dead. He's gone. So then it continues to tell the story. You find out Miranda isn't even, like, I shouldn't say. She is who she says she is. But there is a history there between Miranda and Lily. So that blows your mind. And then as the book continues on, towards the end, you're just, 
you can't believe Lily's gonna get away with everything. Well, then there's this detective, Kimball, that enters the picture. And he's kind of intrigued by Lily. He's attracted to her. He wants to know more about her. He's trying to like get inside her head a little bit. He doesn't necessarily think she's guilty of anything. He doesn't think she's the one that killed Ted, but he just feels drawn to her and that there's something that she's up to, like up to no good. So I don't want to give rest of the spoilers because it really, really is a good book. Out of the three, I would say it was probably the most suspenseful and the most like shocking. Um, so I would really, out of the three, probably recommend that one the most. But um, then at the very end, the way the book ends, like literally the last two or three sentences, it's one of those books that you're really left interpreting in it your own way. And I don't really want to give away because it's, re it's really good, but I would love if you've read the book. Let's continue kind of the conversation down in the comments. I would love to see how you interpreted that ending. That's my final, I would say, um, if I rate my books five star, I think that's what Goodreads does, right? Five star. Um, I used to have an account on there. I don't really use it anymore, but um, I would definitely give the book... I almost want to say like 4.75, 4.5, because there was part of me that was frustrated that I wish it would just, I want to know what happened. And fine, I can go with my own interpretation, but I want to know what the author's intention was for that ending. That's going to be it. I probably talked about the first book way too much. I think one thing that I've learned from doing the book club for January is I think I'm going to go ahead and review each book after I'm done reading it because I actually had to go back and sort of refresh my memory because it had been a whole month since I read The Kind Worth Killing and I feel like two of the video is going to be like super long if I'm reviewing three books at one time. So I think I'm going to review them separately next month and also like right after I read it so then you guys can just come and watch the video for that book review you know the following month i'll just spread them out over the month so anyways that wraps up book number one book number two is the last mrs parish and that's definitely um a book that i'm gonna forget all of the names so let's just throw the names all out the window this book took me the longest to read out of all of them i would say it took till i got about 60 percent through the book that I finally was like, okay, this is getting good. I actually need to finish it. So the book's about this rich family, this husband and wife, they have everything. She's beautiful. She's got all the expensive clothes. The husband treats her super nice. Like she's got, you know, $10,000, $20,000, I don't even know, on up purses and shoes, like the whole fairy tale. Beautiful home, two gorgeous little daughters that are spoiled, you know, and so this girl enters the picture and she basically is a con artist and she wants to be the next Mrs. Paris. She's going to befriend the wife and she wants to learn everything about her so then she can seduce her husband. And the whole first half of the book is so drawn out on how she becomes her friend. She lies and says that she had a sister that died of the same disease that Mrs. Parrish's sister died from. So when she finally becomes best friends with her, she starts getting invited to go on their boat with them, stay in their like apartment in the city. She ends up getting a job working for the husband and she just worms her way into these people's lives. Well, it isn't until the turning point of the book where it finally gives you the wife side of the story because the whole first half of the book is all from this crazy psychotic woman's side of the story and you just get so bored with okay we get it she's trying to learn everything about these people so she can steal this woman's husband and it just goes on and on forever and finally when I pushed myself to get past the middle point and it turns to where then the wife is telling the story of what her real life is like and it's not the fairy tale that we all think it is. Her husband treats her horribly. He forces her to have sex when she doesn't want to. He's put a gun to her head, like all these different things. And you start to feel sorry for her. And you're like, oh my God, here's this crazy woman who wants to have her life and steal her husband. And 
essentially this woman's like go for it take my husband i don't care because he is psychotic and he's just gonna kill threaten to kill you like he threatens to kill me all the time so the wife continues even once she realizes that this girl has seduced her husband they start sleeping together sneaking around together she actually creates the per perfect atmosphere for this woman to move in on her husband she's like they have tickets to the opera and she like cancels just so this girl can go instead like she literally just laid out the red carpet for them to have an affair and then here's where then i guess i won't spoil it because it, it's a good book i would rate it like a b maybe a b minus okay let me do my star system i would rate it three and a half stars based off of the beginning of the book if you want to fast forward and read this just skip some of the hoopla at the beginning then it's actually a 4.5 it actually is really good once you get through the first half of the book so this woman she gets exactly what she deserves she ends up getting pregnant and just it's crazy how everything falls into place and then finally when the wife is able to just say look i did this i did that I basically forced you guys into having an affair and then all this bad stuff starts happening to her husband so it's like those two just completely deserve each other and then the way she ends up being able to protect herself financially legally and just seeing how she ends up at the end of the book in a way better position than she was before this woman decided to come in and try to steal her husband it's just like you're so happy and excited for her and like i said the second half of the book it it ends really really well and um i would recommend it just for that just don't be afraid to like i said if you're reading halfway through and you're like this is boring just skip ahead i actually think there's like a section where it gives the wife's name and it's like okay we're done with learning about this woman now let's see what the wife's real life is like you could even just skip ahead to that section of the book so like i said i would rate it 3.5 it definitely wasn't my favorite but i can see why a lot of people do like it and recommend it it's actually a highly recommended book it was on reese witherspoon's book club and and so on and i haven't got a chance to be able to like see what other people's opinions were or even what reese said about the book but anyways that's my final analysis of that book the last book is all is not forgotten and i read this book in 24 hours i wasn't feeling good one day i believe it was the weekend if i remember right and i just started reading and literally did not stop until i was done with the book i started late at night probably read about the first 50 or so pages and then the very next day i sat on the couch and I took a bath and between those two I just finished the book all in less than 24 hours it was so good I'm gonna give all is not forgotten five stars I just looked it up actually the author Wendy Walker she is uh, an attorney and you can definitely tell in the book the way it's written at first when I started reading it I was like why is this book written like this it's written very differently than most books and i don't know exactly how to put that into words you would have to read it to see what i mean but at first it was like i didn't like it it was like too overly professional that's the only way i could think of to explain it something about it just like rubbed me the wrong way but as the story went on i completely understand why it was written that way but i'd be really curious if this other book that she wrote um i think that came out recently actually it's called emma in the night and I'd really like to read that. I might make that one of my picks for March um, to see if that one's just as good because this book was really, really good. A lot of people compared um, All Is Not Forgotten to Gone Girl and then Girl on a Train. I personally didn't think Girl on a Train was that good and I especially did not care for the movie even like I even less. The book was better than the movie but even the book was just eh. Uh, but Gone Girl is one of my favorite books and one of my favorite movies because I love Ben Affleck minus the whole Jennifer Garner drama like if I think about that I don't like him anymore but I do like him as an actor well, I'll admit it I like how he looks as an actor <laughs> so basically what the book is about there's this 15 year old girl named Jenny and she's in high school she goes to this party 
and some stuff happens when she's at the party that makes her upset so she decides to like run out into the woods behind the house and she gets raped and when the parents find out what happens to her and it's like really really bad like she ends up having to have surgery and like this who raped her just it was really cruel you know so it didn't appear it's kind of like a mystery and suspenseful um it didn't appear as though it was like just some high school kid or anything like that like you figured you know it was like a serial rapist like somebody who was there with a plan just waiting for somebody to come outside whatever so they decide to go forward the mom and dad of jenny's parents decide to go forward with this procedure that can erase her memory so she has no memory of what happened that night so she won't be like scarred for life in terms of what she went through when she was raped but the problem is is it ends up even messing with her head even more because she can't remember it so it's like you know it, they live in a small town when she finally goes back to school people are treating her differently looking at her differently and so here even though she can't remember anything that happened that day it just affects her almost worse and so she ends up going to the psychiatrist and if i recall correctly i'm pretty sure the book is written yeah the book is written from the psychiatrist's point of view and i think that's what makes it so weird is obviously he's an intelligent individual and it is literally written like a psychiatrist wrote the book so she goes to the psychiatrist the mom and dad go to the psychiatrist so you start learning things about the dynamic between her parents marriage there's um things that have happened there to some bad stuff that's happened in the wife's past the reason why um their relationship is kind of rocky and not in the best place and that kind of led to why they decided to do what they did to erase her memory and then you have the daughter going through all of her sessions to try to get her memory back they start with all these treatments like introducing smells and different things that happened that night things that she could remember to try to help spark her memory and finally and slowly she does start remembering certain aspects at the same time like the detectives and the cops they're involved the dad is like on this mission to find out who it was and you just go through the whole mystery and it's very um fast moving fast paced keeps you drawn in and then all these like unexpected things keep happening the son of the psychiatrist he ends up being involved somehow so that all becomes this like terrible thing because then the psychiatrist is put in a position where he's almost lying to the detectives and stuff to protect his own son which is completely you know wrong and it's just it's it's a really crazy intense book and it was so so good and i would say i love those kind of books probably the most um, where you're kind of trying to figure out and you're getting clues and kind of like the same with the first book the kind worth killing i think some of that you could see coming the way the book that's written it builds up to all the things that happen so they weren't all like completely unexpected where in this book um all is not forgotten you definitely are like oh my god i can't believe that just happened like you have a lot of those kind of moments that you're just like wow and you just have to you know it's one of those one more chapter one more chapter then i'm gonna get up and make dinner one more chapter one more chapter so the author actually does a really good job of setting you up to think that it's different people in the story who were the ones that raped jenny like there's definitely a lot of characters that they're building their like possibility of being guilty as the story goes on and you're just like no way it couldn't be him no way it couldn't be him and even till the end like i personally had no idea who it was so uh, i think the book was really well written in that sense that usually you're pretty good at figuring it out and i had no clue almost to the point that i wanted to go back in the story and see the parts where I did read about the particular person who was the one that raped her and see like were the hints not there like how did I miss this I definitely think it was good as Gone Girl I think it's definitely one of the top most like suspenseful books that I read but at the same time there's this teeny tiny part of me that was like almost felt like the ending was a little bit too 
far-fetched. Like the fact that they set it up for you to believe that it was this person. No, it had to be this person. No, it was this. And then to just the way the ending kind of just bam gets slammed right in like the very last chapter. I don't I think it was the last chapter. Just you know, right there at the end. I was like, really? So I don't know. I still loved it though. Overall, as a book, like I said, the fact that I read it so quickly. I probably maybe did miss some details and maybe that's why the ending hit me as such a surprise but I don't know I would say it's a tie between the first one and the third one they're both really good for different reasons um, I know I've had quite a few people um, like younger adults that watch my videos especially watch our family channel who asked me to do some like young adult books and I think I will pick out some more young adult books and maybe pick those for March or April so hopefully this gave you guys some good ideas for some books you'd like to read or if you did read these books along with me this month thank you so much ideally that is what i would love to have happen for you guys to read the same books as me so then you can comment down below whether you read one of them or all of them any kind of conversation you want to get going with the books go right ahead i'm going to reply to comments if you guys read the books i would appreciate you um giving me any ideas of what further you would like to talk about and we'll keep the conversation going on down in the comments and uh stay tuned for later this month i'm going to announce the books for march and i may just include them in another video or just pop in with a short video including what the march books are going to be because i'm not sure yet i haven't gotten that far but i definitely wanted to get up my reviews for january and again i will have the selections for february um down in the description below and right now what am i reading right now right now i'm actually reading behind closed doors and uh, i don't know i'm not sure if i'm gonna like this one or not like it's not really um that suspenseful like nothing has really completely caught me by surprise yet so I don't know I mean it's not bad but it's not really that good so we'll have to see how this one continues on so thanks guys for watching my video today be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to my channel especially if you want to follow along with my Candyland book club and if you have any other suggestions for books a book that you just think I would really like based off of you can kind of tell what books I really like to read um, I definitely am a huge fan of like Twilight and Hunger Games and those kind of young adult books too but I just feel like all of a sudden there were so many people <laughs> trying to make books that were similar to those I didn't like know what to read next so if you have any recommendations feel free to leave those down in the comments below and thanks guys make it a great day and I will see you in the next video bye